All right, so now we're going to look at the first order asymptotic theory of estimation. So, uh, so when uh, the true distribution is uh, u, which is in this uh, submanifold S, uh, then by the law of large numbers, Right, uh, the observed point <coughs> eta bar converges uh, to eta, which is eta which depends on u and zero. So if you recall, it's like the first coordinate. Uh, intuitively, it's like is a coordinate. It's like on the submanifold S, and then the second coordinate is uh, in the fiber direction, right? It's the set of points which uh, map under the the map F. It's like two S, okay, uh, to to that specific value. Sorry. Okay, uh, so this converges to that as uh, the number of uh, samples goes to infinity. So we can define the error, right? Basically, by so e is the difference between uh, eta bar and eta, all right. And uh, so, since that is uh, small, uh, you can normalize it by uh, the number of uh, samples. Uh, And then the intuition that's like for the choice of the scaling is that um, <coughs> as n becomes larger, it's like you, you will have this kind of convergence. It's like at a rate one over square root of n, it's like to the true value. So if you want uh, to have an object which is somehow stationary in its distribution, it makes sense to uh, normalize that error instead, okay? All right, so with that in mind, it's like we can then uh, calculate the moments of the error. Right. Uh, are given by the following theorem. So let me speak the theorem. So the moments. Sorry. That's not bar, that's E tilde, right? So the moments of the error, <coughs> E tilde in the eta coordinates are given by the following. So I, I should remark that, you know, it's like whenever you're talking about things like moments, it's important to uh, specify what coordinates you're in, right? So in general, it's like the moments don't transform like tensors, so you have to be careful about what's happening. Okay, so the expectation of E tilde I, E tilde J is G I J, and the expectation of this triple equal to 1 over square root of n uh, t i j k. Right, and if you recall, it's like this uh, tensor, it's like is, um, <coughs> you know, it's like it's related to, um, you know, it's like the deviation, it's like of the 
uh, dual affine connections it's like from the levy tributary connection associated with the metric tensor okay so these are the objects where um, gij is partial respect to i partial respect to j of psi theta and then uh, tijk is equal to partial i partial j partial k psi theta right <coughs> so again it's like if you recall it's like these uh, are the expressions you get uh, you know, it's like for the metric, it's like, and for what is sometimes referred to as the Skewness tensor, right? Uh, in terms of the convex function uh, phi, um, and so those are the metrics, and uh, you know, essentially, it's like the dual affine connections, which are induced um, by a divergence. It's like a Bregman divergence with uh, phi as the convex functional generating it. Okay, all right. So, um, so you can normalize the error. It's like in the w coordinates, right? Okay. So let us. Okay. So w tilde is one square root of n, right, w bar minus w, okay, and then where uh, w bar is the w coordinate, of uh, eta bar, okay, and then we can uh, expand this. X bar is eta of W plus W tilde over square root of N. All right. So what I'm doing here is nothing more than writing W bar, right? Um, in terms of everything else, right? So that's all I'm doing here. Uh, so this thing is just W bar, okay? All right. <coughs> so with that, you have that uh, that uh, X bar I is a to i plus 1 over square root of n, b alpha i w tilde alpha. So what I'm doing now is I'm doing a Taylor expansion of this, right, um, where I'm Taylor expanding about the point uh, w, basically. Yeah, so that's, that's all I'm doing. It's like, and then what will happen, obviously, is that there are now these uh, terms involving derivatives, right, which is uh, encoded in these Jacobians, for example. Okay. All right, so I'm just doing essentially a Taylor expansion. <coughs> And then uh, the only remark I need is to talk about what that expression is. So where uh, b alpha beta i is the second derivative, as you might expect, of a to i respect to w alpha w beta. Okay. And then if I, uh, <coughs> what I can then do is. Um, I can solve for W tilde alpha. And so if I invert star, 
I get that <coughs> W tilde alpha is equal to G alpha beta B I beta. So I should remark that this expression, as you might expect, um, Right, it's just uh, related to inverting this um, Jacobian, if you will, right? Because if, if you want to solve for uh, W tilde alpha, it's like in terms of that uh, equation, I have to invert in particular this B alpha uh, I term, right? And, B, and then the inverse is B superscript alpha I. And this expression here, um, once you've contracted out the beta, is exactly uh, B superscript uh, alpha i. Yeah? Okay, anyway, so um, then E tilde i. Minus um, 1 over 2 square root of n, C beta gamma. Uh, alpha W tilde beta W tilde gamma um, where this uh, C beta gamma right is um, B alpha I uh, B beta gamma I Right, and that's again what you might expect because uh, again, when I'm trying to solve for W tilde alpha, right, I, uh, I have to take this tensor and then multiply it by the inverse of this, right? Uh, that's exactly what we have here, right? Okay, all right. So, uh, so with that, um, okay. So now you have an expression for W tilde alpha, right? Um, so I can look at the error now in the uh, W coordinates, right? So this is the term, it's like in terms of the eta coordinates, I can look at what the error is in the w coordinates. So therefore, in the w coordinates, right, the expectation of this w tilde alpha is equal to um, 1 over 2 square root n c beta gamma, right, alpha um, g beta gamma, and then the expectation of uh, w tilde alpha, w tilde beta is equal to uh, g alpha beta. All right. All right. Um, right. So the expectation of this uh, has to do with the fact that the expectation of the E tilde vanishes, right? So this term vanishes, uh, and you're just left with this other term here. Okay, all right. I should say that all this is asymptotic, right? So that means I'm looking at a little bit as uh, n goes to infinity. It's like n, when n goes to infinity, if you recall, sorry, unfortunately I just erased it, that Taylor expansion and that uh, remainder term vanishes. 
uh, when n goes to infinity. So we're just left with these things. All right, so so that's one thing. And then since uh, sort of e tilde is equal to square root n of x bar minus eta is asymptotically Gaussian. central limit theorem, right? The error um, w tilde, which is u tilde, v tilde, right? Uh, expressed in uv coordinates. Is uh, asymptotically just given by rho u tilde v tilde, sorry p. So that's a probability. It's just some constant times the exponential of minus one over two g alpha beta. W tilde alpha, W tilde beta. Okay, all right. So, right. And then I can integrate out the, the v's, right? So by integrating p <coughs> tilde v tilde over v tilde, right? We get the asymptotic distribution of the estimation error. And, and the idea behind this is because it's like when you have this coordinate in u tilde v tilde, right, this map f, it's like what you recall, which projects onto this submanifold s, right, um, will, you know, it's like will project uh, anything with a particular u tilde value, it's like in any uh, v tilde, right, onto that u tilde value. So it's the, um, <coughs> So it's just a marginal, if you will, right? Okay, so uh, yeah, so you just need to look at P u tilde, right? There's a marginal distribution here, right? And this just involves uh, integrating P u tilde, V tilde over all V tilde, if you will, right? Okay. Um, and then this is going to be equal to some constant times the exponential of one half g bar uh, of a b. U tilde a, u tilde b. Okay. And then I have to say what that thing is, right? Where g bar a b is G A B minus G alpha kappa <coughs> G beta lambda G kappa lambda. Okay, so if you recall, this comes from um, the this comes from it's like the partitioning. It's like of the metric tensor. It's like into the components. It's like which are in the u direction and the v directions, right? Okay. All right. So 
So when uh, this, uh, you know, it's like fiber space in some sense, this orthogonal, right? To M, then what we have is that, well, I think we'll leave the mental orthogonal to S, right? Then G uh, A K equals to B I A G I J B J kappa equals to zero. Um, so what that means is that uh, this P of U tilde, right? It's just uh, the same expression, but with just the ch alpha beta component, if you will, right? Um, And I mean, the intuition, if you will, is that if these spaces are orthogonal to each other with respect to the metric, right, then when you write down the um, metric tensor um, in those coordinates, you get a block diagonal, it's like a matrix, if you will, right? So the off diagonal pieces, it's like vanish. Uh, and so in particular, these terms will vanish, okay? All right, okay, so, and then in general, if you don't have this orthogonality property, right, um, G bar AB is less than equal to GAB. And if you recall, it's like this is a matrix inequality, right? And what that means then is that if you move everything to uh, the left or to the right, it's like then you have an inequality which says that that resulting difference of the matrix is uh, positive semi-definite or negative semi-definite depending on what the sign is, right? Um, and what, sorry, what are the inequalities basically saying? And yes, okay, and uh, sort of G bar AB is maximized in the orthogonal case. where this kramer rao bound is asymptotically obtained. Uh, so the estimator uh, is efficient in this case. All right, so, all right. So let me say a little bit about that, right? So again, this is sort of perhaps not so surprising, right? I mean, it's like if you recall what's happening, you have this set S, right? It's embedded in a manifold M, right? And you have these kind of fibers right, which are pre-images under the map F from uh, M to S, right, um, and AU is just the pre-image, it's like uh, under this map um, of the point U, okay, and that gives you a way to take points, it's like on the manifold, and then essentially project it, it's like onto this sub-manifold S, Right, and the reason why we've done that, if you recall, is that when you take this data and you construct, say, the mean, it's like uh, estimator, right? That in general is not going to be on S because S is a nonlinear manifold in general, right? So taking complex combinations of data sampled from that is not necessarily going to stay. It's like on that manifold. Um, so what needs to happen then is that uh, this estimator in general, it's like is is on M, but it's not on S. So you need to project from M onto S, right? And, and what this uh, discussion is more or less saying is that if you want the, you know, it's like if you want the 
uh, estimated to be efficient, right, then what you need, right, is that you need that projection in essence to be an orthogonal projection with respect to the metric, okay? And that's basically what uh, the statement is saying. Okay, so anyway, so let me summarize this uh, with the following theorem. Right, so an estimator u hat is consistent when the uh, ancillary family AU passes through W, which is U comma zero uh, in S, uh, which is contained in M. Right, okay. Um, and so the second thing, so more or less, it's like this is a fancy way of saying that, you know, it's like when you have this map, it's like F, it actually is a projection map, right? And the second one is that a consistent estimator is efficient when this family AU of fibers is a orthogonal. to S. All right, and then it should be remarked that uh, that the maximum likelihood estimator is given by M projection of uh, eta bar to S, and then as a consequence of that, a mu is orthogonal to S, and it is sufficient. <coughs> so, so this is just really about the first order asymptotic theory, right? It doesn't really sort of tell you, so all it's really telling you, right, is that in order for you know, it's like the estimator to be efficient, you have to have this notion of um, the fibers being orthogonal, it's like to the subspaces. And of course, it's like, you know, this notion of orthogonality is all about what happens to the linearization or the tangent spaces, it's like to those uh, submanifolds, right? So you're looking at the tangent space, it's like at U, it's like of uh, the submanifold S, and you're comparing it to the tangent space to this. Uh, auxiliary, it's like submanifold AU again at a point U, right? And you want those two subspaces to be orthogonal, okay? And that's sort of the, the condition which is necessary for you to, in particular, it's like have an efficient, uh, you know, it's like estimator, right? And, um, but it doesn't say anything about, well, what happens, um, you know, it's like how this um, quality of the estimator depends on um, whether or not S is somehow curved, right? So that's going to be the next thing which we'll discuss is sort of the high order asymptotic theory uh, of estimation. And what we're going to see basically, uh, as you might expect, is that, you know, the more S looks like a um, honest to goodness um, exponential family in its own right, right? Which more or less is equivalent to saying that it is flat in some appropriate sense, um, the more it's like the higher order, it's like approximation properties will be improved, if you will, right? And then conversely, it's like the more this, uh, you know, submanifold S is curved, right, relative to the notion of flatness, it's like which is induced, it's like by uh, our notion of the exponential family and the sort of the affine coordinate systems which we um, endow it's like it with, right? The, you know, it's like the more it's curved, it's like the you know, the slower it's like the approximation rates will be, okay? So, so that's the essential take home message, right? That, you know, right now it's like we're just talking about the notion of consistency 
and efficiency of the estimator, and that's related to just this first order theory. It's like of how this map F, it's like, and its fibers, the pre-images, relate, it's like, to this manifold S, right? Um, so how its tangent spaces behave. Uh, and then, you know, it's like, if you want to go further than consistency and efficiency, um, and you want to talk about rates of convergence, if you will, right, then, um, then how curved, if you will, S is, uh, will enter into the consideration as well. So, so let me just stop here and now. The next thing we'll talk about is this higher order asymptotic theory.